blessing from the most high we pressing progressing together hey, never ever shall we fear no not them weapons against we can never prevail we'll never stand aside Rejoining me, it's been a rather long time. There were a few technical hitches we've had over the past several weeks, running into I think a couple of months. I do apologize and um, I will try my very best to be consistent. On Plain Talk this evening, as you will see on the screen, we're talking about Forward the AFC. To discuss this very provocative title is none other than the four-time leader of the Alliance for Change, Mr. Kemraj Ramjatan. Kemraj, I want to thank you very much. I'm sure it's going to be a nice program. It might get eaten at times, but that's part oh of Oh yeah, that is part of Christopher Ram and okay. Ramjatan. Ram and Ram. So welcome to Blender. Thanks very much uh, for being here. I didn't know that um, there were some hitches, but you had indicated to me that I, I should be here and I'm glad that I'm here and I'm looking forward to moving the AFC forward with Christopher Ram. <laughs> On the program you mean. Kemraj, um this, I said, uh, this is possibly the fourth time since the formation of the AFC when you and Mr. Raphael Trotman had decided that, look, you will rotate. Um, why have you why do you want to offer yourself once again for the simple reason that indeed the membership requested it and we are a democratic party and uh, the rotation principle had begun with the formation of the party but then it literally was halted we had changed our constitution to accommodate that it will be a democratic process and since it is two years into the term that you would have a leader, if the membership would like to have Ramjatan as leader or Rafael as leader for the two year period, they would so elect him. And um, there needs to be in political parties where senior personnel, especially founding members, um, are still in existence and they qualified they, they, and fit and able, they should be allowed to run. I mean, um, there is no discrimination here on age or discrimination on uh, two-term limits like we had put in the constitution of the country for presidential arrangements. It still is in the constitution. It is still in the constitution. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, but, but in our AFC constitution, we don't have that. And it depends on the nominations that come in from the various districts and regions of the country. And whosoever would like to run will certainly run. Um, I do not think it is a negative that I am leader for um, four out of the seven terms that so far that we have had. When, when someone with an organization, as long as you have been, is there not the risk that you become devoid of fresh ideas that you really need, that, that others need to step up and replace you? That is, that is certainly a possibility. But if you know my leadership style, it is very accommodating to almost all the varieties of views out there. I am pretty consensual. And so that devoid of um, fresh ideas has never been a problem because of the fact that you accommodate the freshness of the ideas coming forth. And also from your own actual background and the experiences and readings, you also come up with your own ideas that you implement in the leadership of the Alliance for Change. And uh, that is why probably you have a popular vote in me becoming the leadership, uh, the leader again in the leadership. But 
But I don't want to talk too much about myself. No, no, not that. We're talking about the AFC and its leadership. Yeah. Because I wanted to, to, to draw attention by, by comparison. You have um, Moses Nagamoto, who is um, no longer, we hardly ever hear from Raphael Trotman, Nigel Hughes, David Patterson. The original leadership team is, is, is no longer present, no longer in the forefront. Some of them are completely off. Um, so what makes you, what drives you into continuing this, this fight with all the odds perhaps stacked against you? Well, it's, if it were the odds were stacked against me and indeed in the Julie elections... Uh, uh, let me make this clear. I'm not only talking within the AFC, I'm talking in the political scenario and the landscape of Guyana. Oh yeah, well I feel that um, I'm very much needed because of the fact that people indicate to you that Mr. Ramjitan, you have to be there. You're one of the more articulate politicians. You come up with the ideas. You are um, with the experience and institutional knowledge. And I believe at 61 years of age, I still can play a role. Just like how in certain quarters, you, Christopher Ram, <laughs> as a, uh, <laughs> you know, a public citizen, you, you are there for how many, how many years now? 40 years, 50 years, longer. And so you have a role to play. What makes it nicer for me is the fact that my membership and especially those areas that we have constituencies, they indicate that please proceed. And um, not because of your longevity, that necessarily means that you ought to now drop off the race. Institutional memory in politics and on the political landscape is very important. And I think that I have that and that is one of the reasons why. And um, you know, I have given it some thought that indeed that we have to have newer leadership. As a matter of fact, we are thinking about um, regeneration, and that is why I'm very happy that youngsters like uh, Ricky Rand, Sarup, and um, Sherrod Duncan, and Jureta, and so many others that have now come into the duly elected um, NEC of the party will take it from there. But at this stage, for the next two years, I rather suspect that my senior seniority and experience will be required nationally and within the AFC. You would have seen over the past day, I believe, um, a, a team of eminent jurists have been appointed um, to inquire into the 2020 elections. Give me a thought of that. Of, of the idea of, of such an appointment with so much already known um, the matter is, is before the courts um, and where does that take us? Well I rather suspect that all of that happened because a vacuum was created by the GCOM officials and commissioners not wanting to do that internal review of operations, human resources, and structures, and so on, to show the flaws and the weaknesses of the last elections. GCOM's credibility was shattered as a result of what happened, and I understand that the number of players were asking for this internal review. When it was refused, and it was very unfortunate, I have the tr tremendous respect for uh, Madam Claudette Singh, um, a mentor in the legal profession and so on. But when she refused that, I think the vacuum was filled by the president then jumping in and stating that he is now going to I, do I'm this commission of inquiry. I'm not sure I agree with you for this simple reason. That to have got that eminent body of jurists mm -hmm. could not have been done in a week and ten days. Because that's the time that we had this, re this refusal by GCOM to carry out that. Uh, no, but this, no, no, no. The GCOM's refusal was being known inside by the three PPP members because long, about two months ago, Mr. Vincent Alexander was asking for this review. So I rather suspect that they knew that it was coming. And he started the process of stating, well, fine, now that we will not get the internal review and people want a commission of inquiry or some some investigation, I am going to start it. Well, okay, it has happened. 
So it is a fait accompli now. No, but we still need we, we need to discuss some of these. Are you suggesting that the PPP wanted that commission of inquiry? Absolutely. I believe that because is 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 a number of months now the president has been talking about it. He had indicated since he got in government, he got in government that I am going to do a commission of inquiry. But he didn't do anything. I think the cause or the occasion arose as a result of the non non um, You think he could have put that team together in such a short time? All these eminent people with so many international commitments? I believe that he could have done it within a month. Ask around what the place. Uh, yeah. Well, yes, it's about a month and a half. All right. since, okay. But whatever it is, it is now fait accompli. Have you seen the terms of reference? There is no terms of reference as far as I have seen as yet. What I saw from the Demerara Waves report was simply uh, to inquire into the events of the 2020 elections. Well, that's, that's not unusual to have... Um, as broad a term of reference as that. Well, if that now, is what you're referring to me, that well, that is what is the term of reference. reference. Yeah. Now, to what extent is this commission of inquiry inhibited in its work having regard to the election petition that is still unresolved? I don't think it will be uh, inhibited in any way. It might be inhibited in relation to what is called who would want to voluntarily go to testify. The way that it has started, it is on the wrong footing. The so president, the commission of inquiry the, this commission of inquiry, it ought to have been inclusive and consultative. A commission of inquiry into an elections that had so much problems require both the government of the day and the opposition to come up with, first of all, the terms of reference, the constitution of the members, how long it will take to come up with its uh, report, and things like that. It is required. But the president, in relation to the scenario of not wanting an internal review by GCOM itself, a self-introspection, jumped in it, and has taken it away, literally, unilaterally. That has certain because of the polarized nature of our state, certain consequences. I believe a lot of people in Guyana, just like the poll of the IRI indicated, that only 22% believe that the elections was free and fair. We will have something like that with the report if the Should opposition... Which country are you talking about, Guyana? Which one? That only 22% believe the elections... 2010, in elections that IRI poll, there was a poll done in, by the IRI, and only 22% believed that indeed the elections was fair and a, a credible election. And you share that belief? I, I share that belief that indeed I am one of them that have tremendous problems after that recount. But, but you, you, no, but let's not go there. Let's talk about this. I believed, honestly, that having not been inclusive and consultative, the Commission of Inquiry will start with certain suspicions. Guyanese generally have this country sometimes don't believe what the government is doing is right and when a government is going to start off on a wrong footing by not being inclusive you're going to have huge problems well, it, 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 the, the president of course has the power yeah I under agree. The, it, the commission went Korea yeah. but the question of funding mm -hmm. for such a commission went, you only get funding in, 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 in at state level through an appropriation act where is that funding to come from I am certain that they're going to come to Parliament for the funding of it I am absolutely certain with another financial paper so you put the Commission by inquiry force and then you well that is it I mean all of these things now that you're bringing out that to me the actual funding of the Commission of inquiry that's another thing that we ought to have been consulted about but no the president jumps straight into it a vacuum being created and so we have that so there again but to accommodate financing for that, I am certain he's going to come. And if we do not support it, he's going to say we do not want to scrutinize what happened in 2020. And so the politics of it will play out. But a lot of people are already telling me that it is a political stunt by the PPP to glorify itself about that elections and to do it for propaganda purposes. It is also to distract from all the trashing the PPP is right now getting 
from its support bases all across the country. And uh, so it will be a major distraction because you're going to have, the, the, they're going to set up this thing now and they're going to call people and the people are going to come and a lot of their supporters will come and say a whole set of things and so on. So, you know, when you want to have genuine inquiries to ensure that lessons must be learned, you have to have it incorporating the opposition and all the stakeholders. And I think that is where the wrong thing is. Well, but I, I still believe, as I have said in an AFC statement, that notwithstanding all those deficits at this commencement stage, I hope that the four uh, members, I think there are two clerks to it that have been appointed from overseas to, uh, they do a good job in setting up a set of recommendations to ensure that we have in future credible, free and fair elections um, that is going to ensure that the damage done to GCOM, um, you know, is restored. The, 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 the credibility is restored. Well, it's going to be interesting, you know, you're going to need a council. Every commission of inquiry needs to have its own council, a legal council. Yeah. You remember um, who the, the council for the commission of inquiry at Rodney? Um, mm -hmm. Then it has to have a secretary. There's a lot of work that goes into it. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, it will cost plenty of money too. Is the AFC going to participate? Oh yes, I am absolutely certain that we, I, I, at a personal level, I haven't discussed this with my NEC, but I believe that yes, we will want to participate. The, uh, at the, the between the Attorney General and the Minister for Governance, they're also, they, they're on, um, there is a project for electoral reform. Yes. Uh, again, which which comes first? So they're proceeding on electoral reform whilst you have this commission of inquiry. It, that would suggest to me that the commission of inquiry, the principal focus is solely on elections. Well, it does appear so based on what that very minimal term of reference um, is indicating. But whatever it is i'm certain that the four commissioners might want to use that expansively and to include a set of recommendations um for purposes of ensuring that that which happened in 2020 does not occur again and um so it could be very well be expanded it will all depend on the interpretation to be put on, on that one sentence or one liner um, to inquire into the events of the 2020 elections. There's no doubt that the 2020 elections, you say 22%, I, 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 th I think that's a mirage. That suggests that the PPP supporters don't believe the elections were free and fair. That, can't be, that just can't make sense. But I want to raise this question about um, Commission of Inquiry. There is a multitude of questions being asked about the circumstances leading to the 2016 Petroleum Agreement. Yeah. The, there is a report, I think I've shared that, uh, mm. sorry, there is a report, the Clyde and Company report, which has painted a damning picture of certain segments of the, the society and, and the political directorate at the time. Do you think, given the, the um, Commission of Inquiry the Elections, and its political significance and given the equally um, overwhelming significance of oil and gas that we need to have a commission of inquiry to trace everything about the signing of the contract and coming back from, from 1999. I don't have a problem with the commission of inquiry there too but I rather suspect that that will not happen um, because it is largely on the record as to what it is that caused the signing up of that agreement. And look, Chris, I would want to say that notwithstanding the naysayers and even the Clyde report and all of those, judgment calls have to be made by the executive branch at the time. And we had huge problems of finding a revenue stream, knowing that sugar was bringing in nothing but was taking out from the treasury. Um, and we had to now make a decision. 
Exxon Mobil came and it's indicated that we have found oil in a massive quantity. There is a model agreement, whatever it was, that we should now base the production agreement on. We then started bargaining with them, of course, for the best interest of Guyana. And a lot of people are saying that we got the rottenest of deals. It is my opinion that it is not the rottenest of deals. It is one of the greatest economic decisions we ever made in this country. And we have gotten now Guyana being the honeycomb of the entire South America. Honeycomb of Hess, Sinoc, Nexin, and, and... Oh yes, so, of, course, on, of course, of let course, of course. Let me finish. No, no, but please, let me finish because okay, you on. are talking about Clyde Report and all of that. I am saying that because of the amount of monies and immediacy, no procrastination, you sign up the agreement, you got a 1%, a 100% more, and the royalty... Oh, come on, don't play with numbers like that. You get 2% instead of 1%, percent of 100%. Yeah, come but, on, man. Come, but, come but, on, come on, don't play with no, numbers. No, 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 well, let, let, just let me... Don't play with numbers. No, but that, that is the, the approach that you'll have. Well, if you wanted to have a better agreement, I think that you'll have to form a political party, go and win what, an election. What a nonsense. Please, that is not what, nonsense. What nonsense. Who is are? that the only way people Please. make decisions? It is the way that we made our decision on the issue. Mr. Ch when we, Mr. Mr. No, no, no. I want to ask you one question. I want to ask you one question. Yeah, go ahead. Have you read the agreement? I read the agreement. Have you read the client and company report? I read the, the client. And the, the, you have shown me uh, some of the, 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 um, the, the, the damning uh, criticisms they have made in that report. You know, you know as well that the cabinet paper leading up to the signing of that agreement was written by ExxonMobil. You know that, don't you? I don't know that. I it's know that report. it was signed. It's in the report. All right, you could be having it in the report. The trouble is that what came to us in cabinet was our, uh, from the minister. The minister brings things to the All cabinet. Right. No, but we come back no, to No, but you, 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 you're denying that what I'm saying? No, no, I'm not denying No, no, well, so fine. Back the trouble this. is Do you that a lot of people are saying that this thing is so rotten. But it has gotten us $607 million. Assuming yeah. that we did not sign that agreement, would we have gotten that? We're going to get about a billion US dollars this year with more coming. And if you can use the positive side of the agreement, you know, in Guyana, we are so negative. Nothing that we ever do is anything good in Guyana. You signed the rottenness of agreement. It That's is not well fine. The, no, what we're saying, okay, okay. should we have a commission so we of inquiry? So should not have taken should, the no, money. Should we have a commission of inquiry? That's my question. I personally, no, we should not. But for those who want to have it, well, fine, you can make a claim. Oh, okay. well, how do you make a claim? How do you make a claim for a commission of inquiry? You ask the president, just like he has done in relation to this commission of inquiry into the events of the 2020 election. Are you defending that agreement because it was signed without the I am knowing. saying well, that the, 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 the agreement the, had... A lot of imperfections. It's the first no, time. No, it's the secrecy I'm concerned about. What secrecy? That agreement was signed in secrecy, Mr. Ramjatan. Well, I'm and, not aware of, of, of it being well, signed. You, you, you're bad no, well, problem. fine. If well, you want to say, I know about it. I know that one of the invaluable considerations we took into account was that Venezuela I put know, a demarcation. you use the Venezuelan bogeyman. Oh, yes, it's not a bogeyman. You oh, needed an American company that could <laughs> tell to the Venezuelans and so that the Venezuelans would not come into your territory. All right, let's go on, let's go on. No, and also, the other consideration we had was the fact that you're going to get monies, otherwise the oil will stay just there, because Exxon had indicated that it will not go into a production agreement if we were too stringent with our terms. You clearly have read so little about this. I'm sorry. Well, but you, you, look, you, you, much, you read much. too much, I think. Well, yeah, that, that is that's probably what this. happened. You, when you read, when you read how Exxon treated Noel Dennison when he went up to deal with technical issues yeah. and said, look, we come here to talk about contract, even though you know, and you know this, let me say you know this, that you're only, that an, an agreement has a lifetime, a statutory lifetime, yeah. you know that. Yeah. And you know the lifetime was expiring. And, and then Street at Ramphal came up with this devious idea of a bridging deal. Devious to say, Sweden Ramphal? Yes. Right. So what? No, 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 you, you, you're so right. I, you have a right to criticize <laughs> the, the great Sweden Ramphal. Great my foot. Well, you can say that. My problem is that I believe that we got good advice in it. The imperfections will always Who be there. Who did you get the advice from? We got the advice right up from Paul Collier. 
of one of the greatest economists, I hope that he wins the Nobel Prize. He has written a natural resource and, and, and the, the, the course and all of that in the bottom billion and a recent book, The Future of Capitalism. Mm -hmm. And he has spoken extensively of it. We brought him down and he indicated that even though you will have criticism in relation to natural resources and the, the, the agreements that are made, and he went and he talked about Nigeria and Ghana and Botswana and all those other countries, he told us. He says, what you do now that whatever monies you're going to get, ensure that you properly and productively use it. Let's, let's talk about that. Are you saying, uh, so you're satisfied now that it has happened, the money is being properly used productively? I am not satisfied that it is being properly used. Why not? Because, of, because it, it is just being shared around and we are not even knowing of it. In the last budget debate, you know that we asked where did the 607 million go? And they said it had gone in the budget. That is what Ashley Singh told us. You were there. You, you heard the debate. This man is hiding the money from us. So we don't know where it is. But we now know that they're taking some for flood relief, fisherman relief, and their constituencies and giving it and doling it out. But so that is where, where we are going wrong again, as Paul Collier had indicated. Uh, uh, and not only Paul Collier, but Clive Thomas too. And it is important. What has Clive Thomas said? Clive Thomas was, was the, the um, Boxden proposal, if you it, recall. Yes, Clive, Clive also had indicated, yes. Clive had indicated that we have to do it in a productive way, infrastructural works, um, raising salaries, and, and doing a couple of other things. Um, so they have put input in, and we have uh, kind of accommodated that uh, by stating that all of these views of these world-renowned economists uh, what you should do. Not hide the money like Ashni Singh and Jack Dave is doing. When you say hide the money, it was passed in an appropriation act in the National Assembly. But for what line items? We don't know where it went specifically and under the act, even the act that the PPP passed, you're supposed to know where the money is going to because there are certain purposes and functions for that fund. But we, 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 we were not told anything. Mr. Mr. Ramjitan, you were one of the country's leading attorneys. Yes. That was clearly a problem. That's right. Why haven't you taken that matter to court? Because it's a political problem. A court can't resolve that, in my opinion. And we, you have gone to court on so many things. You charge even Bar Jack Dale and the, the, the thing drop out like that. You want me to go <laughs> spend my, my time and effort? Uh, 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 and in court matters all right, when you know. All right, you're talking about you're talking about the giving money here, there, and everywhere. You people allowed five billion dollars to be spent to be allocated without any kind of accountability. You are the problem. We how do you answer it. that? When I say you five, five billion in where? In in the um, in the budget. We would not have been in a capacity to block it. Because we are a minority no, uh, no. opposition. But you still, if you know Kemraj. Hey man, the people got a majority. The, 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 the 2020 call by the Claudette Singh is that they won the elections. So they are in government. They got the 33 seats and the 31, the 34 more from um, that human guy. So there it is. No, but if the, the budget would have passed, we never supported no, that. No, 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 but you, you are aware. You are aware and this has happened many times since 2014, that budgets have, have been taken to court, even by the, in the, by the opposition. I, 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 we, I, we carry them to court. And, yes, and that's what I mean. We also block the budget, but you have to have a parliamentary majority. We the, managed the, it in 2011. The, the problem, you see, you people don't have much respect for, the, for civil society, so you say go and form a political party. But the point is this, you are supposed to directly allocate funds. And that $5 billion, you're not going to get any accountability for it. So where does that accountability come, in from? come from? How well, do you get it? You get accountability, as far as I know, in a democratic country, by asking the questions, asking the questions. No, but I'm talking in our, in our situation. In our situation, you'll have to ask the questions and probably wait until the Auditor General now, when he comes out to this report at the end of the year, as to how the monies were spent, and so we will get to know. You wait now ex post facto. Because he will have to say, if they take uh, the money and they put it in a um, uh, fisherman um, relief or whatever it is, and that, so that is when we will know. 
but because we do have a, an auditor general's d department and that department will then account to the people as to how the monies that Ashni and Jagdeo put up in the budget have been spent. Tell me something. Doesn't our parliamentary system allow for questions and in both oral and written questions at any stage in the life of the parliament? Oh yes, it does. So why wait until the the, the um? Audit we you ask the questions, Chris. And what happened? And you're not getting the answers. As a matter of fact, there, there are about 34 questions still on the, the, the thing. We have criticized the speaker for not allowing the ministers to answer the questions. And some of the ministers are very nasty. I remember asking a question on, on the, 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 the license, that boat license that they gave somebody. And you know what the, the minister says? I grant the license like how you used to grant gun license. What did he mean? Oh yeah, you know the insinuation, it was so nasty. And that is the, the, the trouble you have. And when you tell the, the speaker, but what kind of answer is this? He doesn't do anything. Let's turn, let's go back to the elections. You were very prominent in the, particularly in the early stages, about some Russian being involved, I think, um, in, in, in the elections. What evidence do you have? Do you have yeah. that the elections were rigged? I do not have any rigging allegations against the elections. Chris, y'all, you, you know this thing is very nasty. In and around that election period, the police who come under my ministry brought a report to me that there are four Russians at the Marriott Hotel. And they were found speaking to Barrett Jagdale in Russian. So I said, what happened? That there is, what was the suspicion? They said that they suspect that there might be interference. I said, what is your evidence of that? And then they indicated that they will go and do some investigation. The people clam up. Then they start scattering all over the place. What is the people? Which the poor people. I got a report now from Leslie James. It is in my um, phone here. A, a fellow by the name of Jessamy, a senior uh, um, superintendent, and some other people did the investigation from the intelligence unit. And what did they come up with? They come up with a thing that they suspect that these people are here to do some, some mischief. They, they can't find out. I indicated to them, do your police work. And at the very end of it all, they said they're not coming up with anything. What do we do with them because they are now illegally in Guyana? Mm -hmm. And I indicated to them, send them away. Send them away. Because you, as, as public security minister, you're going to get the Russian ambassador coming down on you. Mr. Ramjitan, why are you holding four of my citizens? Two of them are from Russia, one from Turkey, and another one from some other c country around that place, Kazakhstan or wheresoever. But all of them were Russian speaking. Yep. The police had any photograph of Jack Lewis speaking to these persons? They, they had photographs and all of that. But I said, well, what happened? If you know Russian, I'm the former president and I talk in Russian, to, I go to the, the Maria. You know, so I indicated to them, well, fine. There is trouble. And at the back of my mind, knowing how devious Barra Jack Lewis is, I, you know, but you, 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 you think like a lawyer. All right, if there is no proof, but they are illegally now in Guyana, they have overstayed their time, please send them home. And they were deported the next afternoon. Tell me something, though. Um, I got all their names and everything. The police report is there. How we saw how the elections turned out. Yeah. The role of Lowenfield uh -huh. and the role of Mingo. Yeah. The role of Myers, the role of um, the PNC um, chairman. How can you explain this suggestion that the PPP rigged the 2020 elections? Boss, you boss, may not agree it. I, I am telling you, I have no evidence of any rigging by PPP. I wouldn't go so far. You are putting that in my mouth. I have never said that the PPP, the PPP rigged the elections. The AP and UFC said that. Well, whatever. You are said. the AFC. No, 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 not because AP and UFC said right. that. So I, I, am, I am telling you that 
I became very concerned after the recount because in all honesty we were being told that we won the elections and I believed our officers and scrutineers and whatever I asked to see the, the statement of polls. I did not yes. see it. I did not see it. But you act on the presumption that your, uh, your, your, your players are giving you the correct information. The PPP was the same thing. They were saying that we win. So I said, well, fine, we're going to wait until the, decla the, decla the, de the declarer, declaration. that the declaration is made by yes. the relevant authority. By that time, a whole set of litigation came on the stream. And it carried it to a recount. And the recount now had a lot of discrepancies. And uh, in that context, then I would like the elections petition to be heard and, and so on. Look, I, I am not going to make any allegations of rigging on this one or that because I don't have the evidence. You think, they, you think the people who have brought the petition have the evidence? I believe that they, of course, by, by virtue of the recount, not rigging, but so much nastiness happening to the extent that it could not be declared valid in process. And elections, as you know, is not necessarily, you've got to prove rigging. It has been called off because an ID card was not properly uh, statutized in our country by the same part of saying. I noticed. Yeah, there was no rigging. in 1997. And it was called off. I was a lawyer for the PPP then. So. And so it is important to understand because unless we have clarity, a lot of us people like myself will be tarnished. You go to some of the PPP websites, they're saying that how Ramjatan is saying that uh, we, we call them riggers. I have never called them any riggers. I said after the recount, and then when the recount came out, 49 boxes without the documents, this, that, people who were overseas, the police commissioner at the time said that about 4,800 of them voted in Guyana. After the Claudette Singh, judge, um, chairperson, asked for that. 4,500 people? I mean, that is a lot of people who are overseas on the record and they still voted in Guyana? That has been discredited and discredited. No, well, I did. That's what you were yeah. saying. That is for a court of law to determine. Yeah. Well, I was going to get there. Now, you know that election petitions are supposed to be held from day to day yes. and, and as a matter of urgency. That's correct. You should never have a government operating under the cloud of illegitimacy. Why aren't you as a lawyer pushing for this? We, we have been asking. I am a lawyer in the elections petition case with Royce mm. Ford, you know. And why aren't you, why aren't you going to court and say, look, this thing must because be... Because the, the court system has a capacity in which lawyers can, just like the Anil Nandalal is doing right now, carry to the high court, carry to the, 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 the sorry, the, the court of appeal, and now when the court of appeal make a ruling, carry to the CCJ. The CCJ is now ask us for the record of the appeal and we have prepared the record and it will soon come yeah, up. But isn't it, is it, is there any other law, and you're a senior lawyer, as I keep saying that, is there any law in which it specifies the process for hearing a legal matter? As, as it is for the elections that you must hear it from day to day and all these long breaks ought not to be taking place. Do you know of any? The, the, it is the administrative side of the law. A judge that now has the elections petition can then set aside her other trials if she or he wants to. She or he might not want to do that. And so they will say on the appropriate days that are in my diary, I will hear the case, the elections petition. Is that how it is supposed to work, given, well, it given is the language that is used in relation to petitions? I do not think that there is any specific provision that says day to day, day to day, day yes, to day. It, it is. Well, it if is. there is, there is. There it is. still has a discretion on the judge. I remember in that petition case where Justice Claudette Singh was Five the years? judge. Five it years? Took a long time. But that is nonsense. Claudette Singh played games. Well, I don't know if she played games. Of course he's playing games. I'm sorry. I, I can say it. <laughs> I can say it. Well, in any event, I wouldn't want to say that about my judges. The, the, the problem is that they have a bigger, wider... No, 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 but, but my present judges, because you might want to infer that these judges not doing it day by day are also playing games. I don't believe so. I was speaking of the five years. Yeah, the five years one. This one now will probably done in five years too. Oh, Lord. Tell me something. What do you think about this issue of the acting chancellor and chief justice? One, 12 years, I think, mm -hmm. 2005? or 2007, something like that, 
and the other one since Chang left 2016. It is abominable, quite frankly. Abominable. And as AFC leader, even within the Granger government, I had indicated, please appoint the two women. Uh, Mr. Granger thought it fit that he should advertise. I had problems with that. And I indicated to him, well, fine, you're the president. You will. And he was getting support from his attorney general on that score. But he, he personally asked me, and I think he asked uh, Moses Nagamutu too. And uh, they, both of us indicated that now that Carl Singh has gone, as a matter of fact, even in relation to Carl Singh, we had indicated that he should substantively appoint Carl. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, myself and the, the, the Moses Nagamutu made it quite clear to him, and also Rafael Trotman. But he decided to do otherwise, and we are only to recommend decisions to him. He then made the final decision. But it is a shame in our country, and a blot, literally, to have acting appointments all the time. Those are the words of Saunders, isn't it? Yeah, well, that is it. It is. Um, and we have been saying that a long, long time. You would have seen the AFC statement about six, seven years ago, in which we said, please appoint these people. And they are both worthy successes to those two offices. Is it, is it, is it reasonable to have someone acting in a position no, no. In, on the employment law, you wouldn't allow it. No, it, it is not. A, and especially in sensitive positions like these. Because when you hold them on a string like that, without the substantive positions, unless you're a very strong character, you might very well want to feel that you've got to do something for the government of the day before I get the thing. And there is, I think, a Scottish case that says these acting appointments have that tendency. And it is illegal. You got to make the appointment, and um, you know it, it is. I'm very glad what Mr. Norton has done. Throw it back at them. We would like these two people to be appointed, and to prove how disingenuous our president is, he now say, "Well, it and give to share." They are saying it's our time. We will take our time about this thing. Now, Kemraj. I must ask you this question. You raise that certain things are political. And the court often says, look, we are not, we are not the arena That's right. to, for, for fighting the political battle. We will deal with the law. What, how do you deal with a government that just ignores the rule of law, including the supreme law, the constitution, and all the norms of decency and democracy? How do you deal with such a situation? What should Norton do as leader of the opposition? You try to educate the masses that this is wrong and try to win the argument that at the next elections, you vote for the opposition. That is what the democratic process is. If a political questions are only resolvable without violence in the streets, and especially in a racial ethnic society like Guyana, I do not want that. As a matter of fact, a lot of the APNU fellows are calling me to constitutionalist. Well, I am a constitutionalist. The minute you start talking, that, you know, we got to do more than what we're doing. We got to go and do this and that and that and that. You now create fertile ground for one set of mashing up of Georgetown. And then when this thing gets racial, is a lot of East Indians going to get battered? They're they going to want to retaliate in certain areas, and we can come back to a 1962 scenario. So what you do is that you ensure that you talk to the community, international community, the regional community. This is what the, 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 the government is doing. Just like how they came in here and they observed in elections and had lots to say. Democracy is not only winning in elections. It is governance thereafter. And their governance is very rotten, but you're as say, you're saying. You're saying, okay, the, the governance is very rotten, but let's go back to the elections, and we will probably get the same results, and we continue like that. What, what hope, then, is there for, to, for a real democratic evolution in our country? It is the education of the popular masses. It is nothing else but the education and continuing education of the masses. And if the dictators 
and the, the, the new Putins and the Jagabats continue to win, there is nothing we can do about that. You think the population must just sit back? And no, no, I'm not saying that. You have to d d agitate there. You have to go there and, and tell them that this is wrong. That why do you go and vote? That is what is happening right now with the AFC, talking to people at Anchorville, talking to people in Port Norton and Albion and so on. And they are very, very angry. A lot of them saying that we ain't going back there. But of course, you know, a number of them are going to change them out the minute they go in the ballot box and they see the ballot paper and they see the cup. They gone straight back to the cup. I don't know. They just tell me by me, they know how my hand got back there. <laughs> but that is what happens. My camera, tell me something. And so you got to now tell them in the Barbies show that we do every Saturday night that look at where your cost of living has gone. Look at what the discrimination against so many of you from getting the flood relief. And then plenty of them say, you know, we're going to do back just like what we do in 2015. We're not going to go and vote. So, so elections become a vehicle and an occasion for settling scores rather than for enhancing the democratic culture of the country. It is the only means, as Winston Churchill said, to have good governance. One man, one vote. You can't kill it. It takes time in some of these countries, but it is the best system known. And uh, although it is bad, it is still better than everything else. Recent developments again. The, the, the program vice and um, al making allegations yeah. of um, corrupt practice by former president Barjag Bill and in fact the he is the supremo in this government no question about it oh yeah he, he's, he admits that he is his he's, third term he's serving yeah, yeah. Well, it's probably more than that because <laughs> third term has constitutional obligations yeah a president has to operate in a certain way a vice president doesn't this so vice president is operating quite frankly you know that word vice in front of the president is exactly what he's doing. Look, I want, I want you to understand this. When we made that constitutional provision to say two terms and no more, we put it into the Constitution based on the American system, almost identical to what America has. And we indicated in that constitutional reform process that the norms that go along with this written provision, as of in America, must apply to Guyana. The, when Barack Obama served his term, I mean, his second term, he did not become a vice president or a minister or a secretary of energy or whatever else. He gone any pasture. When Bill Clinton won two times, he gone in pasture. But this fella used a fellow named Richardson to go right up to the CCJ getting Anil Nandalal to argue his case that he could run for a third term. And then he used the, 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 this whole arrangement by virtue of a bypass and argued the case that look, the constitution didn't say that I can be a vice president. But the norms of democracy means that also conventions of the constitution come in to say that you should not be there. But this is what he is. And prior to 2015, let me tell you something. It was a very corrupt government that he led. A lot of people visas and so on. He was not the so president on. in 2015. No, no, no. He was not the no, president, but, was but, the president. Before, but it was before. It was before. Ramatar was the president. But I'm, but I'm talking about the time when he was president. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And a lot of people, because of the debt squad and the, 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 the Roger Khan issues and a whole set of corruption and drug runnings and all of that. So there is a disposition that I know about the, 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 what Sue and them are talking about that makes me feel that that was corruption that they were involved in. When you were going to tell somebody, oh, Sue will look after the agreement. I can look after the government side. When you are telling people inside of your house when you know that you went to America and a certain American citizen asked him about investment in Guyana and he was advising the American, a Guyanese um, born but American citizen, 
Please, you better go to Go Invest. We have a one-stop shop at Go Invest. Why didn't he go and bring Peter Ramsarup and carry Peter to his house and say, look, an investor is coming to my house and this man Sue is making the arrangements. Let us hear what they got to say. No, but is he Sue and the businessman? And the girl, Isabel Young, the thing stinks to the highest of heavens. Probably I should use hell. What, what transpired here? And knowing Jack Dale, that thing stinks it stinks but do you think you, you've seen you've seen how politics operates you've seen so many political cycles you think there's a price to, a political price to pay for, for more even the most egregious um, issues we had the minister who was involved in some I'm not talking about in now no this is a different story we get police go to Sabu Yeah, look how they do. Now we, we are the other one. Is it Nigel Damlal and, and, and the... Dildo. The Dildo. I mean... Yeah, no, no, no. The, and that was here, the first here. time. Is there the a political PPP price? The PPP has a capacity to do the rottenest things and get off with it. Again, because of the nature of our politics. It is a very polarized society. And I went to Barbies recently. And you know what some of them say? Yeah, man, let them shaft the opposition. That's good for them. I said, but how could you do that? And one of them, you know, when I found out that um, one of them passed uh, an opposition member's house with a flood relief, and I said, how oh, in all good conscience you couldn't have spoken to the person and said that you don't pass that house? I said, Ramjatan, that you money? What do you want for, for tell me? Let them people give me the money, and if they don't want to give an opposition member, that's it. And so there is a certain coarseness about our culture that we got to evolve from. How long is this going to take? It will take a while. How long? I mean, I, I mean, I mean so how long slavery took? 400 years? And I hope you're not looking for No, no, but I'm saying that in the evolution of societies, uh, I mean, the, the, the British... Uh, what they did to Guyana for hundreds of years and whatever else, it took a while. Similarly, we are still better placed today because we don't have the violence of that kind of um, thing and so on, indentureship and so on. We got to do it now. Political leaders like myself, civic leaders like you, got to educate people and say, well, this is wrong. So I should stay in civic side. <laughs> you should you should stay in civic side. You should stay. <laughs> don't ever come on. And let me tell you something. There are too many young people in our country that are motivated to, to go on a self-exile away from civic duties. Probably we are the ones too that are not bringing them on board, but we got to do lots more. And that is why one of the way forward for the AFC is to, you know, building a lot more young members who, uh, through seminars and lectures and also um, outreaches, we're going to try to capture them to common stream to understand the political realities of Ghana. One, you may not agree <coughs> with my views, Kemaraj, but one of the serious consequences, there are two consequences of that five months with the elections. One, serious discrediting of the a APNU AFC, but also the taking of money by politicians from every and any source has undermined, further undermined democracy in this country. Do you share that view? I agree. I remember that myself and Sheila Holder, we went to Vancouver in Canada on a seminar in relation to campaign financing. And we did the draft. I think you helped in that draft of some sort. And we also asked the Commonwealth. But you know, it didn't get anywhere. Yeah. It does not get anywhere because people indicate to us, you need political parties to get monies from funders. And the funders then become lobbyists. Well, you, the funders, become, these are job people and all kinds of... of well, you, you have all kinds of people. But if you know um, that it's a drug dealer that is giving you money... You think they care? You think politicians really care? Well, I, I would hope that Polit they do. Political parties are the most unregulated entity in this country. Most on you want to form a little trade union, you want to form a cooperative ending, you better get clearance. Political party was your word Jagabat? <laughs> <laughs> no Jagabats could lead them, yes. Why is it 
why is it the AFC is not pushing for the, the, the um, some kind of, of regulation of political parties? Well, you know, as I have indicated, we, we have to have some specialized skills in that area. I have asked the Commonwealth people a long time ago, as I told you, and uh, I feel that indeed we should make an a second attempt here. No, I'm just talking regulating. I'm not talking about because campaign financing, as you know, mm -hmm. the, the it is the core. It's the core to it. We have to get campaign financing going. And I believe that yes, we have a, a partner in APNU that can probably support it too. And that then we'll have to ask the PPP to, to, to support but, it. But I don't think we're going to get a support from the PPP. You know, the only political parties I know that have done financial reports as required by the representation be black, the AFC. That's right. The WPA. A lot of people don't know that, you know. A lot of people do not know I that. Was they, influential in that too. You are very influential <laughs> in that and you show us the way because I wanted to know how best we could come with the campaign but, financing but legislation. I, I, I think um, so we like like the last annual report Whatever it is that we spent, if it is 40 million Ghana dollars on a political party, where did we get the monies from, how it was spent, and it is, you must put in the return. But the, but the AP and UFC has not done that for the past two elections. They well, the past two elections, well, we have been doing as to what we have incurred as expenditures to the, to the elections. But you went in the elections as a joint. No, well, the, 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 yeah, but we are a separate party. Yes. And, now, uh, we, we're coming to the end, but... Um, and we're gonna, I'd, I'd like to come back and talk about the, the future of the AFC and, and the challenges which our party faces. Uh, how secure is the coalition as, as an entity, APNU AFC coalition? Well, it was a partnership that was built around a certain set of um, terms which caused us to win in 2015. In the 2019 period, going into the 2020 elections, we then set up another, a similar arrangement, and um, we lost the elections. Uh, well, at least the, 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 that, the that was Cummings work too. It was that is Cummings work too. Yes, or what you call the second edition of it. Yes, and um, certain things happened that we did not like, but I as leader happened of the party within the yeah election. within the arrangement, like dropping the twelve seats to nine seats. You, you understand what I mean? And um, a couple of things. I don't want to necessarily go into them, but there were some problems. But we believe that as a coalition, it was better to go along so that you can win an election. It turned out that we did not. And that is why in my national conference last week, we had a major development whereby how do we move forward in relation to this whole idea. The light has come on, so we yes. just, uh, just a couple yeah. of minutes. So I, I, I just want to say, yeah, we had three, 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 um, quickly though. Yeah, where we, we indicated that we either stay, we could exit, or we could have a new arrangement in which at least you're not maltreated by the big of the two parties. In a coalition arrangement with a big party, the smaller party naturally will be taken advantage of. And I knew that. Remember I had said that you're going to be political dead meat? <laughs> yes. I had warned that. But you know the arrangements and so on. But we would like to work along with our new partners. Um, the term will come to an end on the 31st of December this year. Correct, yes. And then we can go and prove ourselves again. we got to touch the ground. we got to do our outreaches. Make ourselves as lively as we were in 2011. And we can then... Just one last question. Um, is... Are the APNU and the AFC working from now to try to get the coalition and and Cummingsburg three in place once Cummingsburg two, two comes? I don't expired. think we're going to start with a Cummingsburg three at this stage. That will come probably closer to an elections, if it comes at all. So then it will be a break. No, it, I'm not saying that. We, we, we do not keep any because doors it comes to unopened. An end this, this year end? No, it end. comes to an end this year end. Yes. Well, we go back and we do our thing as AFC. APNU does its thing as APNU. So, so the coalition will disappear at that point? Will not disappear. We will have a working relationship. That is what In the place of the okay. it, Yeah, we will have a working relationship to better the situation. Um, and also, by if it comes to the elections of 2025, 
there is need for an, an, another one? Because I believe that we are going to give the PPP a carte blanche if we run a three-way horse race. Carte blanche. They can always win because they're going to win on a plurality. And that is why I like coalition politics. We're going to get back. We can come back. I hope we will see you soon. And let's, let's talk about that coalition concept and small parties and third parties because they haven't done very well. But Kemraj, I want to say thank you very much. It's, as usual, it's a good one hour <laughs> spending time with you. It's lovely thank growing you. with you here, uh, especially about other oil agreement and all of that. But it's, um, that is what democratic processes are and that is what the liberal democratic um, culture I want to see happen in this country. Operators and viewers, thank you and good night. And I promise I'll see you again next week. <laughs> That it's time to stand up and fight No more repressing with the most high blessings We're stronger together, united Black people rise up God knows we've got to stand up and fight We got the blessing from the most high We're pressing, progressing together hey, Never ever shall we fear None of them weapons against we can never prevail We'll never stand aside While our brothers and our sisters get pushed over by the wayside For this, this is where you call political parties Shall I take up my mask? Yes, yeah, take up my mask yes. Alright Good studio lighting as well Thank you.